What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am BDLM, coming with my buddy J4Y, bringing you episode number 76 of our Dota On Demand podcast. We're going to be talking about Terrorblade, we're going to be talking about Phoenix, we're going to finally answer our viewer question, it's going to be a great episode. What's going on, man? Hey, man, welcome back to the, uh, the mainland from your vacation. Where'd you end up going again? Uh, I went to the Land of Oz. Wow. There were lions and tigers. Hmm. Just those. <laughs> Interesting. Is and, that what uh, you read about? Oh. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I went to Puerto Rico. It was fantastic. My, uh, you know, my clicking fingers, they got a little little anxious, a little tired. But, uh, you know, it's it's good to be back. Um, kudos to you, sir, before we get into it, being really active uh, with the viewers, talking to them, posting stuff on our Facebook. And, you know, while I'm talking about it, shout out to uh, Rocksmith Cody and, uh, oh, God, Andran Muller yeah. for for liking us on the Facebook this week. Uh, you know, we tried to put up a lot of cool stuff there, and you did a good job. Oh, well, thanks. You know, it was there. a one-man oh. show, but I made it happen. No, it, it's, uh, they make it easy. All the viewers, all you guys. I mean, you guys are awesome, and uh, it's a lot of fun. been a lot of fun playing games with you. It's been such a very interesting, like, skill range of players. You know, we got some really new players at Dota, and then we have some of the very experienced players. Everyone's all over the place, but we have a good time no matter what happens. It's, uh, and we've had some ability draft games, which have been uh, questionable at times. Still fun, but very <laughs> unique in each experience. But, uh, no, it's been a, it's a great time so far, and I look forward to playing many more games, and maybe you'll be involved in some of them going forward here. <laughs> maybe. I might make it. I've played a couple. I haven't played as many as you have with the viewers, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely... I, I, I'm very interested in at least, you know, one of the two heroes we'll be talking about tonight. Um, so, you know what? Maybe I can drag us all down together, and we can have a beautiful, wonderful learning experience, and it'll be just just swell. It'll be just swell. Mm -hmm. But before we get into those two new heroes, we do have the question from uh, Jonathan Voss that stopped by our YouTube and we didn't notice it until too late last week, so we weren't able to answer the question. But we are going to uh, talk about that tonight to start off the episode. So uh, it's kind of a long one, and you guys can stop by and look at the whole question if you want. It was uh, a note on episode number 74 uh, where he's like, Hey, I have this problem where I basically pick some of these snowballing heroes. I pick some of these heroes to play uh, mid for the most part, it looks like. Starts off well, sort of falls apart later. When everybody starts to group up and you have those five on five encounters, seem to have some trouble and was kind of like, what can I do to try and deal with that? So, um, in particular, you named a couple heroes like Zeus, Night Stalker, Bloodseeker, and Riki. Uh, what do you what do you think, man? How do you deal with the sort of transition from mid to late or early to mid game? What do you think are maybe some of the issues that get that happen there? And what are your thoughts? The unfortunate part, um, you know, when you get off to such an amazing start, it, you know, and of course everything depends on the hero you're playing, so it's going to be a unique situation. If you're an off lane pushing Brood, it's going to be way different than if you're a Zeus mid who has all the kills. I mean, they're very drastically different situations, but in all of them, uh, it means the rest of your team is generally not doing as well as you are. So, you know, you're put in this position now where, yes, you have a lot of gold and a lot of experience, and you may have even pushed your tower down in the lane you're in, but, you know, what do you do from there? What happens on the other team? A lot of times they react by starting to group up, and they're going to get very defensive, and they're not going to be as vulnerable to these ganks that you've been succeeding with generally up to this point. That's how you've gotten to where you are. Um, so... You know, one of his things he said, well, do you stop pushing towers or do you not push them early so that people can still get picked off in the laning phase? The laning phase, I guess, gets drawn out is what he's trying to get at. And my right away answer was always push towers. Um, there's just so many reasons I feel that like that is the answer, but um, it's gold for your whole team. It's, it's uh, lane control and that leads to map control. I think one of the prime issues when you have this is that once your team takes towers, especially in a pub game, um, you don't uh, go the next step. You don't really assert your dominance on the map. You don't ward effectively. You don't show your control. And when you allow, yeah, when you push, let's say, their safe lane first tower and then you do nothing else with it, um, yeah, they get a free lane to get to farm in. And then you essentially kind of lose that lane to farm in. So, yeah, at that point, it is bad for your team. But if you do it properly, if you ward up, you gank when you can, smoke around. That's where you really make great use of something like that. Yeah, I think that's a really, 
I agree with all that, 100%. And, you know, that's something that even that you and I have come across in some of the games where, uh, you know, we're playing with some friends, and we go, okay, let's go this, like, hardcore push lineup. We'll ball up together, we'll just tear things up, and then win for, off of that. And sometimes we'll do that, we'll group up, we'll take early towers, and then we'll, like, lay off, and we might sort of give the enemy team some room because we want to, you know, farm up this item or that item. And then you find out, you're like, oh, holy crap, we don't have the advantage we thought we did because... While we're running around as five, they were split up. They were getting experience on other parts of the map. And I think that that's like, a big thing to consider, too. Uh, if you're playing against these teams that want to group up and they want to fight, well, make sure you have great vision and try and split push. You know, uh, Ricky was one of the heroes that uh, Jonathan was talking about. And, you know, Ricky's great for the team fights because of the cloud. But if you really feel like you can't take the fights with your, the rest of your team then go off and split push and try and force them to break up from their ball or move all together, which frees up space for the rest of your team. Mm -hmm. um, Night Stalker was another hero that was mentioned, and that's another one where great warding is going to mean that you can pick off people that split up, or it means that you're going to be able to reduce the amount of safe area that the enemy has, which is obviously something that Night Stalker can take advantage of um, in the first place with the ultimate. And also on top of that, you can go an item like AC if you want, or you can go Aghanims and get a gem, and you can reduce the enemy's vision. And really, I think vision is the biggest part of this, because if they are moving around together, you can take advantage of the rest of the map, and as long as you know where they are, you're pretty safe, and you can do that. If they're just deathballing at your base, you are just going to either have to force that fight or split push effectively, but I think those are really... I think warding is really a big part oh, yeah. of how you can... Uh, try to transition and manage the game even if you don't have an advantage. And this is where sort of your team comes into play. So a lot of times when you get the advantage and you... Uh, if it's like your solo queue, it might be a lot harder, but if you're in a group, it's so much easier. You have to coordinate with your team and say, okay, now we've done this. Maybe you have to start the lead. I don't know what you have to do, but you have to make sure everyone's on the same page with the map control. And uh, counter warding is probably one of the most important things because obviously once they lose those outside towers... They're going to look to ward up their jungle or other places where they know they need to stay safe. And uh, if you can take out their vision in those key places, and especially in low-level pubs or just pubs in general, a lot of people don't stray from the norm warding positions, you know, up on the high hills, um, you know, up by the rivers. I mean, these are spots that most of the time you'll be able to counter ward relatively easy and you'll get rewarded now with a 50 gold bounty for the sentries. So it's really productive for you. And let's say your supports are not cooperating or just not really, like, they want to stay off their items. Whatever the case is, don't be afraid, if you're the one getting all the gold, to buy a set of wards. It's only 200 gold. Uh, for the you know the detection and uh, you get to get rewarded if you do find their wards you get the gold some of the gold back but ultimately you're helping the team as a whole and it's really not that ex much of an expense considering how much it changes the game yeah and I think too like you could even say with Bloodseeker even with Night Stalker you know if um, like you said you're getting that advantage you can buy the gem and some of these heroes can carry it all right. Um, Buy yourself a hatchet, too, if you're having a hard time. Like, if you don't want to bother some of your ranged supports or the ranged heroes to try and help you deward, if this is something that you can just do on your own, do it that way. I mean, I think the the vision is a, a really important part um, of the game, obviously, in general. And that's a thing, too, that people tend to slack on really quickly. As soon as you start getting ahead, supports go, oh, man, uh, we're getting all these tower kills. I've I have money, I can buy items now. And they'll be like, well, I'm close to this item, I'm not going to buy awards. And I think that's one of those opportunities where you can really start to lose the game because, oh, they just ganked two or three of us as a group, and now we're at a disadvantage. So if you're ahead, feel free to spend some of that money on items that are going to benefit other people and not just you. And if you are getting a lot of money and you have to fight, BKB. Pretty good answer on any hero you're going to be playing. Uh, of course, if you're a Zeus, you might not want that. But, you know, as far as the Riki, the Night Stalker go, that's Bloodseeker, you know, a great item to pick up. Yeah, don't necessarily make yourself in a vulnerable position. Like, don't go, like, uh, you realize you have so much gold. Don't go, like, Radiance on Bloodseeker or something. It can work, but then a lot of times it also leaves you incredibly vulnerable to, uh, you know, people, like, that the burst damage. And that way, if you go with something a little more, so you have that sustainability in the team fights, it'll help dramatically compared to something that's a way more greedy build, per se. So there's going to be the games where you go the fun, greedy builds, you know, but then it's not for every game. If you're, if you're continually finding yourself in this position where you're losing 
after getting such an advantage, these are the kind of things you need to do, some of the changes if you want to secure a win a lot more easily. Um, but it, it just bothers me so much when people, and this may be a little tangent, but when people complain about the lack of wards when they have so much gold sitting around or lying around, um, and some, some supports, I admit, they should you know get the wards and they don't. But other times they're hard pressed. They've upgraded the courier, they've done what they can, they don't have any gold. If it's that important, which a lot of times it is, you know, I've seen Dendy play Pudge, right? I've watched him play Pudge dozens of times on his own stream and other places. He buys smokes, he buys wards, he buys all those items that normally supports do so he can dominate his mid lane as well as gank the other lanes. And, you know, he, and yeah, okay, Pudge is different in the sense that he doesn't necessarily need big items to do well. But still, the point is, you know, if your hero really needs those kind of things to start gaining control of the map and doing well for your team, then it's not that big of an investment to do it. Yeah, I mean, that's something that you're likely going to get the return on, and even if you don't necessarily, obviously the rewards, they're going to last a while. They might open up opportunities later for other teammates. So there's even a, another opportunity to not just stack the gold on yourself and be able to help the rest of your team with the advantages you've been able to get. So I, I think that's pretty good, man. I mean, uh, Jonathan, I hope that was a good answer for your question. And anybody else, you want to stop by and drop us any questions, you're welcome to on the Facebook dot com slash toad on demand youtube.com slash toad on demand you can leave them in the comments or you can you can come tweet at us too because we both have those now but uh oh, how about we we continue our discussion from last week jay terribly we right. kind of introduced him we went over his abilities and some of his stats and i think the conclusion we came to kind of um or the last thing that we really talked about was just how important the stats are to terribly and sort of telling you the story for how the hero sort of should be played or what he's good at and what he's not good at and you know very quick very nice agility gain kind of the weakness though really low health pool to start um i don't know do you have anything in particular that you want to start off talking about this hero any like really main thoughts concerns well it's kind of building off what you said but he's got high base move speed 315 that's one of the higher ones in the game Starting armor, highest starting armor in the game at 7.08. That's insane. That 7 armor is quite an amount. However, like you were saying, the flip side, uh, he has the second lowest starting health in the game. He's only second to Kotal. <laughs> um, he's even got lower health than Anti-Mage. So, very, very low health, as you were saying. Um, but, obviously, really great 3.2 agility per level, great gains there. Um, and eventually, uh, he scales super well in the late game, and uh, that's kind of where he shines the most, obviously. Yeah, I mean, the the thing that I kind of like about Terrorblade is that he seems to be a, a really hardcore carrying anti-carry. Um, because of it, reflection, um, you know, you have, you generate an illusion, you reduce attack speed by 60%, and as well the movement speed and then this illusion is obviously going to be attacking the target and because you have the the conjure image to work on your range form the metamorphosis you're going to be able to turn out a lot of damage you're going to be able to turn off the enemy carry so to speak with the reduction in the attack speed and just wail on the enemy and of course you have sunder for the uh, bad positions you might get yourself into with health so i uh i really sort of like him in that respect and sort of comparing him to maybe Viper, the other really big anti-carry carry. Uh, Terrorblade nowhere near as defensive, and I think that's, like you were saying, second lowest starting health in the game. That's, like, a big uh, drawback of the hero, but the kind of cool thing with that, too, I think, is that the fact that Metamorphosis gives you the 80 bonus damage at rank 4, and when I'm playing the Terrorblade, I'm maxing that first, because that is sort of like your kill switch, like, flip that, in order to be able to turn the tide in a battle or when you're it's getting ready to go for a big yeah. kill. Yeah. So you can sort of say, okay, I have the innate ability to gain a massive amount of damage. I can look to go for a defensive item first. I can look to go for something that might give me a little bit more stability, even if it's just a casual cloak. You're starting the game with your stout shield, maybe. Something like that. And then if you have to turn it into a straight-up defensive item, I think that's okay because that ability just gives you so much passive damage. Yeah, no, I, I, I do like like not necessarily rushing uh, such a weak item that still keeps you weak. Um, you know, he obviously does need a little bit of health to take up that damage. I mean, uh, I, I don't know which way you want to take it. I guess we could just go over his abilities since you've kind of named them all, but uh, to get a little more detail on them at least so people are aware. Um 
the reflection, uh, 22 down to 10 second cooldown, but like you said, makes an illusion of the opponent, or the enemy you cast it on, that does up to 70% of its damage, also slows attack and moves to you by 60%. Uh, he's got, uh, the first three of his spells are stacked mana costs, and very cheap, may I add, uh, where Sunder starts at 200 and goes down zero, his ultimate, but we'll get there. Uh, Contra Image, just makes an illusion of yourself, lasts 32 seconds, 16 second cooldown, so technically you can have two up at a time. Um, these dam illusions do 60% damage at the last rank, and take 300% at all ranks. Um, Metamorphosis, as you said, you're on switch. <laughs> you go range form, you get up to 80 bonus damage and 550 attack range. You do get a slower base attack time, 1.6, but uh, this lasts up to 52 seconds at the last rank with 140 second cooldown, which we'll get back to in a second here. And then Sunder, your ultimate, 250 range, very short. But you uh, swap health uh, with the opponent you, you use it on. So, uh, you actually, uh, it starts 120 second cooldown, goes down to 40 seconds, starts 200 mana, goes down to zero at the last rank, so very quick usage and turnaround. And the minimum health starts at 25 and goes down to 15%. Yeah, I, the metamorphosis, I think, is, like, the biggest thing, and really, I think, the core of the hero. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, it's the, the big damage, it makes you a ranged hero, and then, of course, your images that you create are then going to come out as ranged, which is uh, really important. And they also are going to benefit from that damage increase. So the cooldown, though, is so restrictive. I mean, that's, I think, the... I think you mentioned it last week. It's almost like this is his ultimate instead of Sunder because of the cooldown. And that's almost really, I think, the thing that limits this hero as well as empowers him because now you, like can't help but have to work around this really long cooldown, longer than two minutes, mm -hmm. um, in order to be at strength. So what do you do the rest of the time? What happens if you're fighting up against a team that wants to force fights, that wants to force them more often than two minutes? Um, I think that's where you're going to start running into trouble as Terrorblade, because two, you know, you have your utility spells, you have Conjure Image, or not Conjure Image, pardon me, Reflection as well as Sunder that have these really, really short ranges. So really, you can be kited pretty easily despite the fact that you're turning into a ranged hero for uh, a decent amount of the time. Right. The kiting is obviously one of his uh, main weaknesses once you're out of the metamorphosis, as you're saying. Because when you're in that range form, you don't really suffer too much from that problem. You know, you, you, you have that an, enough range to be enough of an impact in fights. Um, so, you know, one of the main reasons he deal or one of the main ways he deals with this, uh, well, a couple ways. One, he gets move speed, generally, with his items. And two, he gets some kind of slow, so he can uh, stay on the target. Um, and that's more of a general concept. Obviously, people like to build their heroes the way they like to build them. But I think uh, that's the smartest way to uh, stay with someone and try to avoid that problem as best you can. Uh, Black King Bar, as you said earlier, with a different kind of problem, but still kind of helps with this problem as well. Despite not helping your illusions, they're more for the added damage and not so much for you know, any other utility. So the blocking bar is still a very useful item on him, but I guess we want to just go into item builds in general at this point, since that's kind of how it's <laughs> progressing in this matter. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think a really important one is Manta Style, maybe the most important mm -hmm. item on this hero. Um, really, any of these heroes that have the really high agility gains, you can really see, I mean, much like Phantom Lancer, who has a really high agility gain as well, because that actually passes on the damage to your illusions, whereas plus damage does not. Right. Uh, being able to pick up items that give you agility, a good amount of agility, very important. Yasha, great item to increase your farm rate, the movement speed, like you were saying, and then also because you're getting the general stats out of the ultimate orb, just a really nice item, because the mana is actually quite tight. If you're conjuring images, if you're trying to use those to push or to farm with, and to use Sunder on top of that, you it hurts early game trying to early like, game yeah <laughs> yeah to conjure an image and then really be able to do your whole sort of combination or to use a reflection then want to use all of your other spells together it's, it's really hard to do um and because you can just like pop that on top of metamorphosis you can really increase your damage output dramatically with that item and i think that that's like 100 percent of the time an item that you should look to get on terribly 
Yeah, that's obviously a very strong choice. Um, like you said, giving stats over to him really help his illusions in general. Uh, something that doesn't help a lot, Vlad's. Please do not go Vlad's, folks. This is just another Phantom Lancer story here. You know, it does not benefit your illusions the way you'd like it to. Um, you know, it, it, it can help your team in general, but let your supports get the Vlad's if you really want it on your team. Um, you're not going to get lifesteal and ranged for him. Illusions don't benefit, like I said, similar to Phantom Lancer, so just really not a good item, uh, or a wise, if you're looking to build something like that on him. Um, this, uh, this sounds like a J4Y pub nightmare. This sounds like, this sounds like experience, my friend. You this need, is just... Do you need some couch talk? <laughs> do you need to... I need some pillow talk here. Yeah, this, this is, this is unload. deep, this is dark. No, I, it, it's also kind of funny how the way I played him in Dota 1, back, way back when, um, is, well... The way I started playing when I played him for real. The first way I played him was like everyone else. You went Dagon. And you just laughed because you would Sunder oh. Dagon. And it would kill a lot of people. Uh, well, you can't... Okay. Let me just explain it so everyone understands what they probably shouldn't do. But they will try after this episode. Um, you go in the jungle. Get yourself real hurt. Real weak. Right? <laughs> and you have that Dagon on you. And you just sneak out of lane. Now... Easier with a Shadow Blade, right? But not necessarily the case. If you can somehow just get that element of surprise, pop out, Sunder, Dagon, hope they're dead. If it's Huskar, I'm sorry you lose. That's not going to work. But anyone else, most of the time it's going to work. Um, but yeah, and then I realized that wasn't actually a strong build, per se. So I uh, started going to Scotty uh, really early in my build. And actually <laughs> ends up being one of the late game core items on this hero as it turns out um giving that slow kind of helps with the problem we were talking about earlier with getting kited you know you're going to keep someone very slow it also helps late game when you're against their carry you're going to be slowing them down um their attack speed which is very important and um gives all those stats you get and those stats like we said transfer over to your illusions as well um but it's just a very strong though obviously very expensive item as well, so this is why I'm saying very late game. Definitely not one of the first times you should be rushing in any means. Um, absolutely love the uh, Mantis style, like you were saying. Drum is a very great item on this hero. We, we, I mean, we praise that item pretty much every episode on every hero, but it's because it's so good. You know, you get the stats, you get the move speed, and you get the on use. And now it's better. It's more expensive now, but it's better for that the extra charge. Um, boots wise, treads is. Very popular, you know, get that attack speed and the space stats for all your illusions as well. Um, like you were saying, the plus damage is not really as much of a factor. Um, and you don't really need the burst of speed, it helps in times for sure, but, you know, if you can get the reflection on someone, that is such a long slow. Five seconds of like a Venomancer slow is what it feels like, well, what it is almost, and, you know, it's usually enough time when you're in your uh, steroids form to kill anyone. Yeah, I... This hero is uh, really interesting to me. I mean, I know you don't—you're not the the biggest fan of him because he's a little—he's a little vanilla. He's—he's he's your sniper, let's say. There there are some buttons you hit, but it's not that all that often, and you just kind of—you just wail away, you know. But uh, I I do like the Scotty. I do like the idea of that. Of course, Butterfly is also going to be huge. I, I why is Radiance situational? Can we <laughs> can we talk about this? Like we can if you really want to. <laughs> here, no, we know why, but go ahead. I think we know. Radiance why. situational on Crystal Maiden because if you get a bottle on her, you can bottle Illusion Rune, <laughs> and then you're farming hey, everywhere. Any hero can build a Manta. I'm just saying it's not just specific to agility carry. So you know, I've seen Tinker Mantas before. It works. Um, Does but it? it Sometimes, depending on what you need to dispel. But, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, Radiance obviously is situational because it's like similar to a Fam Lance or a Lone Druid idea where you just send your illusions off to a different lane and push them and farm them with your illusions. But that shouldn't be really a good reason. That really shouldn't. I mean, if you're really that focused on farming for late game, I, I would almost just. I just wouldn't do it. You know, the, the way this hero should be played is not you know, focused on super big farming clearing. It should be, let's protect him, um, get him his items. You know, he needs to farm a lot, but it doesn't need to be like he invests uh, all that gold into just something for farming. Um, so I'd rather, much rather have the, the Manta, the Drum, the Scotty, all these, the Butterfly, all these other items seem so much stronger than a Radiance on this hero. But 
So let's 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 just kind of take that one off the table. Yep. Yeah, I don't like that one. I think all the rest of the the suggested items I'm kind of on board with. Saint Junyasha is a little weird. Makes you know. sense though, because it, it it does it does kind of meet the requirements of what I was saying. It gives the slow and speed. It kind of gives you both roles. Um, but obviously, if you're gonna go Manta, you know it's it seems like a better usage of your Yasha than to throw a Sange with it. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure that I've, I've seen it and I've seen it work. So you know, if you really want that immediate slow, I mean, then again, you can go Orb of Venom, I suppose, if you're really that desperate for a slow. And then you have the re the, the reflection, so. Slow shouldn't be your priority. It really should be the speed, if anything. Yeah, I mean, I really like the, the Orb of Venom to start with because you can abuse your high movement speed against melee heroes mm -hmm. in particular. Um, you know, and as long as you can stand up and fight, and I almost always start with the Stout Shield because I feel like it's necessary oh, yeah. with such a low oh, mana yeah. pool. Um, I, I think that's just, you know, a really... This is a hero that I feel like nine times out of ten I would wind up wanting a Scotty on for the late game, unless it's all magic damage coming at me. So, might as well pick up the Orb of Venom and use it when it has the potential to be pretty strong. Um, you know, I... This hero, to me, is all about finding that one team fight, that one opening, and then just blowing the doors off the hinge. Um, <sighs> being able to win the team fight, take a tower, kill Roshan, do multiple things, and being able to push the game really far in a short amount of time uh, because, you know, with the Metamorphosis, with the Conjure images, with the Mana Style, you can just tear stuff down. So if you're able to get uh, an advantage, it's really easy to push that with this hero. Yeah, it's, Metamorphosis is so crazy. It's it's a really crazy spell. You know, it gives more damage than uh, Shadow Fiend even gets with his bonus damage passive. Now, granted, it is obviously on a cooldown, so that's where I guess it comes in differently, but just the fact that you get 80 damage of that last rank, which, as skill bows go, we haven't really fully discussed it, but you said you max man force. I completely agree. I can't see... The only way you would go a different build is if you were a jungle. If you were playing a jungle version, which... Oh, yeah. Oh, that look. You're gonna There's try it after that. this cast. I already know that, but well, I'll, I'll show you how it is after this cast, may I say. Um, for all of the uh, listeners that, that not, aren't watching the YouTube, there's a there's an eyebrow and it's it's raised. <laughs> it's been uh, it's up there. It's been increased to an amber alert now. Um, but yeah, that was not funny. Jungling, mm -hmm. you you start with the uh, the Chondro image and you go W or Chondro image Metamorphosis image and then you max out Metamorphosis after that. But you start with the image. Obviously, that's how you can are able to tank up the damage and uh, do enough hopefully. But uh yeah, generally don't do a juggling on this hero. He he really thrives um, in the safe lane. Obviously, he's you, you should really think of him as an anti mage, but just played a bit differently. You know, he's going to need the 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 help more like a faceless void. I'd say an anti mage because anti mage has the escape potential and he's really got some nice defensive resistances up front. Um, you know, faceless is really weak early game. That's his weakest point. Obviously, he starts getting super strong later on. But he needs the uh, support of his uh, teammates to make sure he gets the farm he needs. So, yeah, you really need to take care of this guy. If you leave him in a lane by himself, uh, he's probably going to not get you to the point in late game that you need him to get to. So, uh, But it, it's just so crazy to me, this hero. The fact that he's so weak early, but yet he's so strong early with the metamorphosis. It's almost like when that's off cooldown and you have that available... It's crazy at level 2 how with Reflection and Man War Sis, so many people say they can get first bloods easily on a hero that has no escape. It's just, within that 5 seconds, let's say you have a support with you, that person's dead. There's no way out of it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if, he, if you can get into range to Reflection somebody and you pop them in Morph Sis, just because of the, the damage swing, the you know how slow they're moving, it's really easy to get kills off of that. And you know I think that's in part why the Stout Shield is also so important, because... If you're getting up close enough to pop reflection, then try and stand there and just beat them down in metamorphosis, then the creeps are obviously going to be attacking you. And very early, that's difficult to deal with. That's a lot of incoming damage. Um, the thing that I find really weird about this hero is just like you know, you said with the metamorphosis, you the kiting isn't as big of an issue because you're range hero, obviously, so you can still put out the damage, but you can be completely skill kited. Um, you know, Sunder 250 range, mm -hmm. 275 range on reflection now since the patch. You, you are just damage if you're able to be slowed enough. Um, and, you know, I mentioned Viper earlier. He seems to be just a 
fantastic counter against this guy. Um, and also, you know, Bane, another great hero. Because, you know, even if Terrorblade pops the BKB and he wants to just stand there and just attack, or he wants to try and use the Sunder, just hold him in place. Beat him down. Not a big deal. Or if you can kite him effectively, Sunder is a non-issue. You can just do all the damage you want to him, and as long as you can stand there and take the damage that he's throwing at you with Metamorphosis, you don't even have to worry about the fact that Sunder can completely turn the tables as far as health goes. So it's weird that, that, that Metamorphosis is like such a critical spell, but then it also doesn't sort of help you with the one thing you're weakest against, even though it sort of does, if that makes any sense. Your damage can't be kited, but all the sort of mechanics of your spells can be. Yeah, but late game, thankfully, most of the time you're just going to need to be metamorphosis and conjured images. And like late game reflection, while very nice, obviously, uh, is generally not as necessary because you're going to just be this wrecking force, you and your two images, uh, just dishing out tons of range damage. Uh, and if any melee carry jumps on you, that's when you pop the reflection, and now you've got that uh, assisting you on top of everything else. And the Sunder, like you said, that is, and this is part of the reason I'm not in love with the hero, um, just for the fact that it, this ability is amazing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it can be mediocre at times. Let's say everyone around you is low health. Well, then who am I really switching for? This isn't going to do so much for me. But... You know, sometimes you get those incredibly valuable ones where you can run up to an enemy support and switch percent healths, and all of a sudden you're back at full, and this guy's at nothing. Um, which I, I don't think I mentioned, but it's percent health that's swapped. It's not, like, the number. So, you know, obviously it helps you in the late game. If you swap with a support, even though he might have 800 health, and you have 3,000, you go up to 3,000, not 800 from this swap. So, incredibly... Some people say one of the strongest abilities late game, but there's its downfall, the 250 range. Can you get it off in time? And that's where I think the Black King Bar can come in handy a lot, is when you're afraid of getting CC down before you can even get the Sunder off. You know, it's really important to make sure you have that uh, that way out. Yeah. And, you know, Terrorblade got a little bit of help, too, when he came into Dota 2 as well, because we see that the reflection cast range was increased, but now Sunder can actually go through Magic Community, which I think is uh, really important. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean... Just being able to BKB as the enemy carry against Terrorblade uh, Reflection, I think is really nice. I mean, if you have any excuse to go BKB, I feel like it's strong against the Terrorblade just because now you don't have to worry about this dramatic attack speed slow and you are going to be able to jump in and do whatever damage you can. You don't have to sort of maybe avoid the Terrorblade in the fight, go and pick off the support. You can sort of go right for him. And if you're not getting reflected, you might be able to keep up damage for damage. Um, so I, I don't know that this is a hero that we're going to wind up seeing a whole lot of competitively. Um, you know, I think he's interesting, but I don't know. What are your thoughts? I think there's potential, honestly. I, I, I mean, he's obviously a very strong late game potential. You know, it, it's, uh, it's in his kit there. He's got the tons of damage. He's got, um, he's got the images, which obviously scale throughout the game. And the Sunder, which potentially can give you almost two full health bars if you play it properly. Um, so he's going to be dishing out tons of damage. He's going to be tanky if he gets the right amount of farm. Uh, I, I think he could be used. Now, granted, not as face roll as other carries in the game. It's obviously going to take a lot of building up. And, uh, you know, a lot of assistance, like I said. It's going to be one of those four protect one strats or... You know, giving space to him so he can get to the point where he needs to be. It's not as easy as Antimage, who just gets a Battle Fury, then goes to the jungle, and you'll see him in 10 minutes with a whole new freaking big item. You know, he needs that help along the way. But the good news is, he can help you in the early parts of the game, too. Whereas a lot of these other ones are not nearly as effective at pushing towers and dishing out the early damage. So if you need to call on him, you can. Although, obviously, he'd much rather be away farming. But yeah, I, I think, honestly... Uh, especially with his recent buffs, like you said, you know, he's been getting buffed uh, patch after patch, it seems, and they really want to make sure he's in a spot where he's going to be competitively viable. So, uh, yeah, I could totally see him, not right away, but then again, most heroes aren't right away, except for Elder Titan was, you know, he was one of the exceptions. But, yeah, I totally can see him in there. Yeah, the thing that I'm really curious about, you know, like you, like we were talking about earlier, I've been out of town and haven't gotten to watch a whole lot of Terrorblade games, but obviously, whatever farm Terrorblade's going to get, he's going to be able to make really good use of, and potentially 
more useful than other heroes would be able to because of the illusion component of the hero. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm really curious to see how he stacks up against really hardcore farming heroes. Uh, heroes like Spectre or like an anti-mage, somebody that's going to be able to get a uh, Battle Fury or be able to get a Radiance. I'm wondering in sort of, you know, the farm race, how he's able to stack up with just getting Yasha. You know what I mean? Or even if you had a, a Luna that's going to be able to get an early Helm of the Dominator and stack up creeps. I wonder how his speed compares. Uh, you can use the images, but obviously that's going to strap you for mana and you would just sort of have to, okay, I'm just going to be farming for a while. I'm really curious to see the speed of this hero and his farm rate. Um, obviously you're not going to be popping Metamorphosis to try and farm because you want to be able to pop that for the fights. Mm -hmm. um, so you really just have your Yasha, your good scaling agility, and whatever images you can conjure. And I wonder if that's enough to keep up with some of these really fast farming heroes. And Midas, obviously. Every, every, always. Well, every always. I have yet to see one on him, but I'm just saying, if maybe you're worried about late game, that's, that is an option. You can go on that hero. I mean, attack speed doesn't hurt him. You know, clearly he's going to be, <laughs> well, it doesn't. I'm just, you know, it might be obvious to most here, but I just want to say, it, it's, you know, it's not like it's a bad thing to get some attack speed up on this hero, because you have the damage coming from Metamorphosis, so attack speed is just going to, you know, make more use out of that. Um, but, I, I I don't worry. I obviously he will get overshadowed and farm by Antimage Luna, those kind of people that take advantage of stacks, but uh maybe his kit makes up for that fact by making him such a stronger presence in fight. Plus, like I said, the Sunder it's almost like Weaver, obviously not nearly as good as Weaver ult, but it, it kind of gives you almost a second life if you can use it properly. And whereas a lot of these other heroes don't have that uh that option. So, you know, you can almost uh, fight a hero twice with this guy, and uh, it's almost can be like a three-on-one in some cases when you get your illusions up. So uh, I, I'm not too concerned about it, honestly. And the, the beautiful thing is, like I said, these mana costs are static for the most part, or decreasing in the case of the ultimate. So late game, mana is nothing. You know, you have so many stats from your items that you know you don't you can use spells willy-nilly. Plus, some are most of them are pretty long cooldown, except for obviously reflection, and. Uh, so let's just say anti is against you and he mana burning you. It's going to hurt, but it's not really going to take you out of the fight, I don't think, because you're going to not really be concerned with using mana late game. You're just going to be trying to dish out as much damage as possible to him. Yeah. I'm just wondering, too, um, I, I just am really on this Viper thing. I You oh know, if, if I was going to pick a hero and I was like, oh, I want somebody to anti-carry... You know, I still think I I kind of like the Viper. I mean, obviously, there are dramatic differences between those heroes, but, you know, Viper is going to be able to maybe get that mech up, get the Agonins, it's going to be fighting a lot. I don't know. I, obviously, it's situational, but which of those heroes do you think, if you were like, okay, I have somebody that I need to take out over on the other side of the board, I really want, you know, somebody that's going to be able to uh, push pretty well and be able to fight other carries, which one of these heroes are you maybe more interested in? Captain. I'm sorry, compared Captain Drafter. Who am I between who? Viper and Terrorblade. Oh. Um If I'm going for the if I'm going for the late game I'm gonna be doing Terrorblade. If I'm going for mid game I'm gonna go Viper. I feel like they each have their own specific niche. I think Viper is the superior uh anti hero hero carry. Anti carry carry. Just with his ultimate doing that drastic slow and uh, the fact that when you attack him, you get slowed down. And he, he's just wonderful at that. He's also going to build an item like a mech early. And he's just wonderful for your team to be surrounding. Whereas Terrible is kind of the opposite. He's like, yeah, I can do okay in a fight. But I'm so good on my own split pushing, doing my own thing. Um, that honestly, I, I'd take them in different situations. If I want to go against the late, if I'm against a Spectre. Or if I'm against uh, anti mage, maybe I'll go the Terror Blade route and uh, try to match him one on one. If I'm gonna go maybe for semi pushed lineup, or I'm gonna go for that mid game run, I'm definitely gonna take Viper. I accept. Yay. Yes. I mean, uh, I know you're gonna pick Terror Blade every game now. Oh God, no. So did I, um, did I tell everyone that I have vendettas against him though? Vendettas. Wow, you have V for vendettas. Him. Um, no, I I just don't I don't like playing him, frankly. I I, I think he's a strong hero, and I I can see where he comes in handy. But he, I think I was telling you before the cast, I find him more boring to play than anti mage. And 
that says a lot. That says that says everything. I don't really need to go any further than that to me because it's just like like I, I like the whole steroid thing. It feels cool to like bulk up in this form and start just knocking on people. But I, I really dislike the whole Sunder mechanic, like using it. I I don't like really enjoy like waiting to the last second to make sure I get it off properly and uh, what if I get stunned last second and I don't get it off? Now I'm really pissed off because I died and I shouldn't have. And, you know, it's just like all these annoyances. Um, maybe I haven't won with them yet, and this is the reasons I'm not really <laughs> enjoying them too much. And I've also done a lot of pub games recently, and I have to tell you, of the, like the five Terrorblades that have been on my team, we've lost all five games. So, Ooh. you know, it's obviously people just trying out the hero, and it's not always going to be that way. But I like the hero in proceeds, but... I would much rather play Phoenix than Terrorblade. I'll put it that way. Me too, as it turns out. And what a great segue into Phoenix. Uh, look at you go. Uh, swooping in. Huh. Diving in. Diving in, that's <laughs> oh. oh, That's uh, the spirit. Yes. Oh, that's so good. Oh, We should have a show, shouldn't we? Because we're so witty. Somewhere we talk and people listen or something yeah. like that. So I don't. Know. We'll 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 figure it out later. But uh, Phoenix, rained strength hero, get another one. Um, Yay! That I think very similarly to Io has just like this weird, funky kit, and I he's just a lot of fun. I think uh, really neat stuff going on there. Um, let's go through his abilities real quick. Icarus dive dives in an arc, basically a really uh, narrow ellipse that will apply a slow and damage over time to everybody comes in contact with over 1400 range uh, 200 area effect and a 36 second cooldown static that has no mana cost but costs health it costs 15 percent of your current health applying a 25 percent slow fire spirits similar to io's spirits you wind up getting some little orbiting spirits that you're able to shoot out that do aoe damage upon arrival uh, they put a dot on the target for four seconds. They have a 1400 cast range as well, and cost 80 mana up to 110 in addition to 15% of your current health. You also have an ability Sunray, which shoots a beam that will damage and also heal allies hit by it for an amount plus a percentage of max health. You can turn the beam, and you can also use your toggle movement ability to move in the direction that you're firing very very slow like at 250 percent movement or 250 movement and then finally jay's i think uh favorite ultimate of the new heroes maybe or the newer heroes uh supernova you turn into a sun sounds pretty good to start uh in the 1000 radius you do a bajillion of damage over time and after six seconds if you survive you do a stun in an aoe uh, the sun survives by withstanding 5, 7, or 10 regular attacks. If it does not survive, you die, you go kaput, <laughs> and everybody's very sad, and that's that's the story. I mean... The story of the phoenix. Favorite, favorite ultimate NA? Absolutely. Well, of the two heroes, there's no, no oh. questioning in my mind that I, favorite, I prefer his. Favorite NA between two, two things. Okay. Yes. No, I Supernova is just fantastic. It's such a great ability. The sound effect, it's beautiful. This hero is beautiful, may I also add. It, all his, his uh, imagery, uh, his spells, the way he's animated, and then the Supernova with the sound effects and the explosion at the end. It's it's just a work of art. Like, I almost, like if I'm on the good team against him, I almost want to you know, finish up just so I can see the explosion happen, because it's just so beautiful. Like, I'll take the stun for this, you know. You deserve it. You deserve mm -hmm. it for picking that hero. But um yeah, what a what a what an interesting kit, to say the least. I um I have like I think this is like one of those weird ones. I think it's very easy to think that he's either a not very good hero or very easy to be turned off to if you're not familiar with him, because nothing is point and click. There's nothing that you can just say cast stun on hero A complete. Um you have to sort of take your, the arc of your Icarus dive into consideration when you're trying to apply a, the slow and the dot. Um, your fire spirits don't move very quickly, and you have to try to 
use those uh, effectively, obviously, to do the damage, to reduce the attack speed, which they also do, which I forgot to mention. Mm. And the Very sunray, important, too. <laughs> the, yeah, and the sunray has a 6% health cost per second, so it's possible to do 36% of your max health to yourself. So I think there's a lot of just, like, really weird stuff. And then, of course, with the ultimate, there's the potential that you could just screw up and not use it well at all. And put yourself in a position where you can just get attacked down and killed and say, well, this hero sucks. It's not quite 36, because it's 6% of your current health. So as you're using it, your current health is also lowering. So it, there's math involved that we're, not, we're, uh, definitely, we're definitely not doing. There's no way. But uh, the, good, the good and the bad news. Okay, so the good news, the bad news is it uses your health. The good news is it's current health, meaning as you're using these abilities, especially in succession, um, the costs are going down for each use. And, uh, you know, it's... And then at the end of the day, you know, you can finish everything off with a nice supernova and get back to full health and mana. And when you supernova successfully, all cooldowns are refreshed except for the supernova, of course. If that was refreshed, this hero would be absolutely broken. So there's a reason for that. But, um, although Refresher Orb is kind of silly and fun on him. Very trollish, indeed. But that's a whole different story. Uh, you've never seen Double 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 Sun before? Double Sun? Across the sky. Uh, Have you seen Rubik it. steal it? Now that's more fun. Is it a green ball? Because that would be actually really. No, fun. unfortunately not. I think they they need to make implement that though. It should be a green ball. That would be fantastic. Um, but I don't know where to start with. I guess uh, maybe his position, his role, like what you generally think you do with this hero. Now, I I, I do like how you compare him to Io. Obviously, the only other strength support ish, as far as I know, um, could be wrong. But, Think about it. Think uh, it through. Sven's been used as support. Tusk has been used as support. But let's just let's just stick with Io for now because they're very they've got some very important similarities. Um, both of them have moves that use their health, uh, drain their health, I should say, and uh, you know obviously for different purposes. Um, Io more of the obvious like support hero uh, due to the fact that he's transferring health and mana to his allies. He's giving them a steroids buff. And then moving them around the map, um, and then he has the random move that does damage because everyone needs to do damage. But Phoenix, obviously, his his is much different in the sense that he he doesn't really have the CC component. Now he does have the nice moves or attack speed slow, very nice attack speed slow. May I say, 140 is insane. Try attacking against him when you have that on you. You will maybe get one or two attacks off in like five seconds. I, there's math again, I'm not doing it, but um, the only other CC he has is the Supernova, and uh, that takes six seconds to get, get through. So, you know, this, the miner's slow from your uh, dive, and some attack speed slow. Uh, obviously, he's more about burst, and he's more about anti-initiation, is the way I've actually read it, and I, I agree with completely. I think he's really strong in that kind of sense, so um, I don't know, what positions do you think he'd be best suited in? I like him the most in support. Um, I can certainly see... I know some people like him in the off lane. I see his potential for him, too, in the middle lane because uh, the range on Icarus Dive is absurd, and you can cancel it early, so you don't have to do the full sort of arc of your ellipse. You can sort of go halfway, and then all of a sudden you're in a lane and you're able to help. Or, you know, you don't even have to go on top of the enemy heroes. You could just sort of put yourself in a position that you can more easily fire spirits or just... Go all the way around, drop your fire spirits, and then get out. Um, also, you think if you're in the middle lane, you can also go for a mech really early, which is fantastic on this hero. And this is a hero, too, that I think, compared to some of the other support heroes, or heroes that can be played in the support fashion, really benefits from extra gold and extra experience, because he is paying health, and then sometimes health and mana, in order to cast some of his abilities. So being able to build up items that can sort of help make up for this usage of your life, um, I think is, is really important. But I really like him in the support role in particular because I think he works well in conjunction with other heroes. Um, you can Icarus dive and then use your fire spirits while in flight to make it a little bit easier for you to land them because you'll be closer to the target you're shooting at. But also, if you have heroes that can stun, it's super easy to land the Fire Spirits. And like you're saying, not only is it a massive attack speed reduction, it's 140, which is actually at the last rank, which is higher than the last rank of Untouchable for Enchantress. Wow. And we all know 
how hilarious okay. that makes mm-hmm. Roshan look. <laughs> um, but it's actually a really good damage scaling. Um, it's 80 per rank over time. Uh, well, 80 total over the duration of the spell. It's 20 per rank, and it lasts 4 seconds. So um, there's really a lot of potential here to deal out a good amount of damage if you have some help from your friends. And the other neat thing about making him a support, too, is the fact that you're able to do percentage health buffs and damage because of the Sunray. And you really don't need... The items are really useful on this hero, maybe more so than other supports, but they're not necessary. You're still able to have your close to full effectiveness without any items, especially when you consider that your ultimate is completely devoid of really having any benefit from items. There are a couple that work really well with it, but for the most part, it's it's pretty straightforward. You either make it or you don't. <laughs> yeah, but that, that ultimate, I mean, you obviously want levels so you can get it up there for the amount of hits it takes and the extra damage it does, but... Um, but yeah, I, I completely agree. He he really is not necessarily item wise, it's not important. Now, uh for the most part, uh especially in that support role, which I agree by the way, I think support is where he thrives. Uh, you know, I've seen him play middle in the pub scene and he's one of those middles where he'll have a great laning phase because obviously the harassment coming out from the uh spirits, the fire spirits is really hard to deal with since it has 1400 range and while you can dodge it for the most part he can shoot him out pretty quick as well so uh... you know it's hard to last hit against him it's very hard to do many things against him but when he gets that mid to late game okay now he's got a couple items but what is he doing he's not really scaling with his attack or anything nothing like that's really getting impacted so he's just kind of falling off as the game progresses and that's why i think he's much better as a, either an offlane or support um, Offlane, I can totally see. You know, we we were first discussing this a little bit before the episode, and we were both like, "Hmm, offlane. Well, what would you do with him there?" Now, when you think of offlane heroes, you try to think either tanky enough that you can take the hits and escape still, or you have an escape. Well, he's obviously got that. I kind of think of him like a Kotal with an escape in the offlane, because uh, he's got the really far range, so he can try to CS or try to at least stay near experience uh, range as long as he doesn't get stunned in that beginning of his uh, dive that he should be fine to get out if he needs to. So uh, I could totally see that, but I, I, I think I like him much more in that uh, that uh, that support uh, just so the fact that he can uh, get safe levels, uh, help his uh, carry out, and then late game not really have items but still be contributing a lot to the team. Yeah, I mean, the problem with the offlane, I feel like you have a 36-second cooldown on your escape. So... Um, if you're really against any sort of a difficult offlane, then you're going to be in trouble because it's just going to be easy for them to be like, oh, we're going to CC, we're going to apply a slow, you're going to emergency Icarus dive, and then are you going to come back? If you do, then we'll just do it again. And because of the difference of the cooldown, you're just going to have to spend so much time out of the lane that you're not going to be getting the levels. And I think the levels are really important because not only does the ultimate supernova get... um, really dramatically more useful as you can level it up because you go from needing five attacks to kill it to seven and then to ten so it increases right. it to that third rank um but also i mean the damage you're doing is obviously going to be increased dramatically because like we were saying earlier it's 80 per level that's a, a really nice increase in damage so to me you know the, this here really does have to enjoy some successes to be really useful he does need to get some experience and uh, the nice thing about him, too, though, is that Icarus Dive really lets you be super mobile, 1,400 range, and you can cancel it halfway through. If you're on low health, you can really use it to just, like, move around pretty easily. And uh, the suggested item, the Tranquil Boots, does have some nice health regeneration on there and uh, does also give you some armor. We haven't really talked about the stats. Maybe we'll talk about the boots first because, uh, you know, I know you're not a fan of the Tranquil Boots. Well, but okay. All right. Some health regen for... Uh, I. I'm I'm not I'm not like morally opposed. I'm not like you know sitting on Capitol Hill advocating for no tranquil boots for Phoenix, you know. But uh, although I do live work near Capitol Hill, but that's a different story. Um, so I could if I wanted to. But anyways, mm. no one would get me. All right, back on topic though. Uh, Trank boots. I can totally see where they're coming from. Obviously, he's going to be using health. So regening health is nice. You know, 
that makes sense. It's a, it's a nice way to get back the health you're, you're, you're spending. Um, move speed, he's slow as hell, which we're going to get to his stats, but he's, he's a slow one. And, uh, you know, to give him this really nice speed, one of the fastest boots in the game, besides boots of travel, I mean, that's another way to help roam slash uh, get around the map to do what you need to do. Um, and then the armor, like you said, uh, another great way to uh, make up for the fact that he has no armor <laughs> to start out is uh, <laughs> very useful. So, you know, all those aspects, as I'm saying it, I feel like really stupid because it seems like a really obvious choice now. But, <laughs> um, you know, I could also see possibly where the uh, arcane boots have been mentioned as a support, mind you. Uh, now, obviously, mana cost-wise, dive doesn't take mana. Fire spirits takes up to 110 the last rank. Um, Sunray 100 consistently, and then Supernova's 200, which is actually pretty expensive. But as the game progresses, and if you don't build that arcane boost, if you build other items that we'll get into later that still have int on them, it's generally enough that you don't necessarily need arcane boots. But treads, phase boots not going to do you any good. You're clearly not made for attacking. You're for in the back lines trying to apply debuffs and shoot out rays, lasers, like fire lasers at people. That's that's your job. So, I can totally see where Tranquil Boost come into play. I'm yeah, just, like, I've... convinced myself. I just, when I said that whole thing out, that's good. it was a great way for me to realize, I think you're right, Tranquil Boots are the way to go on this hero. They're stupid and that's why I like them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... The thing that I found kind of weird reading about some of the Phoenix stuff is people are like, you know, yeah, you get Tranquil Boots, and, you know, I guess you could do Arcanes, but, I mean, unless you're popping Fire Spirits all the time, I mean, <laughs> you're fine on mana. But I'm like, Fire Spirits are awesome. I totally want to be popping that all the time. Um, and so I think, like, you really want to try to get some sort of cheap magic regeneration, uh, or mana regeneration, on top of health regeneration. I like going for the Tranquil Boots because they're cheap, and then obviously they make up for your uh, spending health, and then they also help you get to something that's gonna give you or g help you get to another item faster because they're cheaper. Um, so the Urn of Shadows is a great one. Right. Um, one of the ones that I'm like really shocked is not listed as a situational item is the Veil of Discord, especially when you consider that it got buffed this patch. Um, I'm assuming the rationality is that because you have an ability that works off of percent damage and is pure damage you're not getting effectiveness on all of your spells but really you know this is a hero with zero armor he is burning through health uh could use a little bit more intellect so that you can use fire spirits more often i feel like it's such a perfect item and you can also use the item while you're in flight doing your icarus dive I don't really know why you would not be interested in getting this item in a number of situations. I completely agree. It's a very undervalued item. It's pretty undervalued in general, um, across the board. A lot, a lot of people you do not see get picked up unless they've got a really heavy uh, magic-oriented team. But even if it's not really heavy, I mean, we've discussed this item a few times, I think, with different heroes like Venomancer and whatnot, but just to have it for your team, for even the couple heroes that do a lot of magic damage, it really does provide a nice buff, and the fact that it's so easy to use. You know, it's a huge radius, lasts so long duration-wise. I mean, if you could just hit at least three of them, it's almost like a weave uh, with Dazzle. Like, if I could just affect a few people with this, it could totally change the outcome of the fight. Uh, obviously, we have a little more important than <laughs> this Veil Discord, but still, uh, the comparison kind of stands true. So, I, I definitely agree. I, I think, you know, it could be a very useful one, especially depending on who else is in the lineup. You know, you could really then get a lot of value out of it. Um, and, uh, you know, I like what you're saying about the urn as well. Uh, mech seems to be the most popular thing that people go for him first, obviously, to restore the health that you just spent. And it's a great team item, and it's a support item. It's like, all around, it just makes perfect sense on this hero. But Urn's not a bad choice also. Um, you know, it gives you that early man regen, like we were talking about, that maybe if you don't get the arcane boots, that's going to help make up for it. Um, and uh, obviously restoring health to everyone around the map. I mean, now, the only issue with the Urn, possibly, is that you're not within range. But you can solve that with a little dive or a little bit, you know, you've got your ways to get in and out of the fight, so... That may not be too much of an issue. Uh, I was reading a guide that said how important tangos and salves are early game for this hero. Like it's stressed, like it may have been worth, maybe worth 
buying even more throughout the game instead of just up front, just so you have the ways to get health back so you can stay in the laning phase and not worry about always being low on health until 6. Yeah, that's that's valid. I mean, I I can totally see not wanting to pull tangos. Like, if you're in a situation where you have, you know, your second support there, you go, hey, you should really be doing that. You know, give mid a little bit of help, because I need them, obviously, to function um, using all these abilities that cost health. Um, I I don't... I think the Tranquil Boots now kind of make up the difference for that, needing them later on. Um, but starting off with tangos and... You know, a salve I think are is a good way to go. Um, I I think that the the mech is a, a strong item, but the thing that I really do like about the Phoenix as well is just the fact that there are a lot of items that you would get in the support role that really aren't as popular on other supports that make a lot of sense for Icarus, for instance, Heaven's Halberd, uh, Rod of Atos, Shiva's Guard. Um, these items make a lot of sense for him because A, he's a strength hero, Heaven's Halberd is going to give you a, a disarm and it's going to give you more health and some survivability. Uh, Rod of Atos, health, intellect, and now you have a slow to help you land your fire spirits. And Shiva's Guard, pop that baby, and then go into Supernova. Everybody's attack speed slow to begin with because of that, increasing your likelihood of surviving the Supernova. Um, these things you don't normally see on support heroes, and I I think they're really strong choices for the hero, and I don't know that the hero has a kit that makes me go, okay, well, this is the situation, so I'm going to go Phoenix, but really the item choices that he makes, I think, really help put him into a particular situational role, and because of the attack speed slow as well as the Heaven's Halberd, I think going up against carries is a, a situation where you might go, yeah, let's go Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like I said from the start. He's really a counter initiator. You know, he's got great ways to protect his support in ways. You know, not necessarily with hard crowd control, but with more uh, unconventional ways. Like we're saying, the slower attack speeds, the the fear from the the uh, the sun coming out there when he's trying to ulti in supernova. You know, now they may have to switch attention away from the carries to get that killed. Um, you know, he's got a very diverse kit that really brings out so much more to the table. Uh, as well as a heal, uh, an underestimated heal late game, I think, that really can stack up if you can aim it correctly. Um, yeah, and I, I think I was saying, you know, while in my notes, while he doesn't really have util so much utility in his abilities, you can get those in items. Like you were just saying, Rob Atos, you get yourself a slow. Uh, you know, Heaven's Albert, slow plus the disarm. Uh, Shiva's for the slow as well. I mean, you don't have to have it in the kit to, to get it elsewhere. You know, we were saying he's not really item dependent, but they obviously can make a big difference if you can't get them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I think I said earlier, I feel like this is a hero where the the items maybe have a bigger impact than they do for other heroes um, because of just the way that he interacts with his health pool. And as another item I wanted to mention earlier, I forgot the, the Pipe of Insight. I mean, I think is a fantastic item because of the amount of regeneration uh, that it provides you. Um you know, do you want to talk about the stats real quick? Because we yeah, mentioned we, we were going to talk about earlier. <laughs> yeah, um, so 2.9 strength gain, actually really healthy. For a support hero, this guy hits pretty hard. And, um, you know, if you are picking up an item like Heaven's Halberd, obviously you're going to be getting more of that strength and be hitting even harder. The agility, though, is really where he lacks as far as his primary stats go. Uh, getting 1.3 per level, starting with just 12. Zero armor. Um, so... You know, that's where I think the Tranquil Boots also make a lot of sense. If you have a great excuse to pick up a Vlad's, I think it makes a lot of sense on this hero, despite the fact that you're not getting the um, lifesteal from it yourself. But 285 movement speed, kind of slow. Base damage of about 50. I mean, everything looks pretty good except for the armor and the movement speed. Mm -hmm. And the movement speed, obviously, the reason for that is the, the, the Dicarous Dive. I mean, if he had fast speed and the way to travel that quickly across the map... It would be no chance for anyone, so, you know, makes a lot of sense that he's kind of been cursed with that sluice. I mean, that's why we're saying more reasons why those Tranquil Boots are looking better and better each time. You know, we, we can make up for his weaknesses with uh, the item build you go. So, and his base damage, it's really not as high compared to other supports. Some of them, like Witch Doctor and others, have Vengeful, have pretty high base damage off the bat, but 
he does his damage through mainly his fire spirits and not his auto attacks anyways, so that's really going to be a moot point for him when he's in the laning phase. Uh, his attack range, I don't know if you said it, but 500, kind of uh, on the lower end of uh, ranged heroes, but once again, uh, I feel like these other abilities way more than make up for his attack range in, in terms of uh, of that kind of aspect. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, this is a hero that I'm, I'm really interested in playing. I'm, you know, he's been reworked quite a bit um, over time. He's had a lot of adjustments made to him. A lot of the effects of his abilities have been moved around, shifted. Um, so it's kind of going to be interesting to see how he winds up uh, being played and if he's actually able to be played in the competitive scene. I mean, he was just added to the captain's mode of Dota 1, so we really have no idea how much potential there is to see Phoenix yeah. in the competitive scene. I totally think it's possible. I'm very interested to see it. I think that, you know, this is one of those heroes where if you put him in the right player's hands, he's going to be able to do a lot of work. Yeah. I personally don't see him picked up a lot. And I, I'm usually wrong, so I hope I am. I, you know, honestly, I really do hope I am. But just for the fact that he's one of these Dota 1 heroes we were talking about who didn't get put in until later in the, uh, into the game, a lot of the people on the pro scene don't have experience with him, and therefore, or not a lot of experience at all, I should say, and therefore are going to be like, oh, who's this? How do I work with him? It's, uh, you know, it's going to take some time for them to build up uh, enough of a, uh, you know, a point where they're like, okay, I'm comfortable running him in this kind of lineup. You know, maybe against this uh, baseless or anti major, someone that's going to be attacking super fast and I need to slow him down. You know, that kind of thing. But uh, he's very niche. Very niche? 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 It's just fine. It's just fine. We'll go with Lich. Opposite of Lich, it's fine. Uh, you know, actually, Lich slows too, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, Lich and Niche. They're both niches in the Lich. I'm trying to say that mm. he does something that most supports don't do. And that that's why I think he may actually get drafted. Because, yeah, if you try to like compare him in a very typical lineup, you're probably going to pick other supports over him. But if you're looking to do something uh, or you need a certain counter, he can be a great uh, great candidate for that. Yeah, the, I, I think it's kind of funny that this is a hero that I feel like if you're attacking the Roshan pit, he's like amazing. But if you're fighting Roshan, it's like awful. <laughs> like it's so easy to be able to attack people within there because you have the Sunray, which is obviously going to be nice in tight spaces, in the lanes, um, being able to hit multiple people to do damage and to heal. Uh, you're going to be able to get the coverage through the fire spirits. You're going to be able to potentially fly through the arc of your Icarus dive and lay on a lot of the damage early. And then you could also even sit on the ramp just outside of the Roche Pit, channel the Supernova, and have to get people to walk all the way around to come to you, buy yourself some extra time, mm -hmm. potentially. Um, I think that's a really strong place for him to fight. But, of course, if you're then on the defensive, people are trying to challenge your assault on Roshan, you don't necessarily get so much out of it. And um, I, I just am really curious to play around with this hero. Obviously, I've been away and haven't been able to do it yet, but this is, I think, one that I'm going to have to uh, spend some time getting to know and working on. As our resident support hero, yes, I agree completely. You can support me as much as you want on that hero. So, time to start saying some interesting things with this guy now that we've moved on. Um, first of all, his hard counter is Meepo. I think everyone could have predicted that, but if not, uh, you don't want four or five things attacking you when you only have ten hits. Uh, not good for anyone. Um, but, the harder counter, used to be harder counter, was Wind Ranger when the ultimate worked on the <laughs> Supernova. Oh. Yeah, those were really sad Phoenixes back then. But they did, one of the, like, gazillion patches they've done, they've all been, like, five megabyte patches. They've probably done about ten of them in the past two days. But one of those was to make us a Wind Ranger cannot target uh, the egg. Because that was just ridiculous. That was no fun for anyone. Um, so, yes, that, that was fortunately taken out. But uh, as far as other items going uh, for her, uh, or him, or it, uh, for Staff, uh, not really useful during dive, but you can use it while channeling the Sunray uh, to push yourself farther. It's almost like if you're Pudge and you're trying to get in that hook rage, well, let's say you're starting to channel Sunray and they're starting to run away, force Staff yourself forward, and now you're even got a farther reach on them. Uh, interesting thing there. 
Uh, Yules apparently does not put you in the Cyclone as you're doing the dive. However, it does instantly purge the debuffs like Silence and Dust. Now, I don't know why you're getting dusted and why you're afraid of it being on you, but just in case you are, you can purge it instantly. Um, uh, also, you can use uh, target items, uh, Shadow Blade, and Blink during dive, if you so choose. Um, and you can also get runes with dive, if you're good enough. So Ooh. that'll take practice, apparently. But let's say you're supporting your safe lane, and the two-minute rune spawns, and you want to help your guy get it. You swoop in, <laughs> grab it, and come back to the jungle. <laughs> pretty <laughs> troll. <laughs> That's pretty good. I do like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I... Apparently you can also channel Sunray while in Yules. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> it's neat that there are so many of these uh, item interactions with the hero. And it does hurt you, though. Because yeah. it's health removal, I guess. I don't know why, but it does hurt you, apparently, while you're Yules. I guess that's good. <laughs> yeah, I guess we want it to be a little fair, if we have to. Um, but, you know, I think that's a really uh, important thing to think about with this hero, is all the things that you can do while you're diving... Uh, you can shoot the fire spirits. You can use items. So uh, I think that's kind of a, a great reason to go for items that have like the on-use effects. Uh, just because you have a time where you can literally do almost nothing else other than shoot your fire spirits uh, while you're crossing your arc. And um, you know, I think that's a, a big part of that hero is being able to use the Icarus dive effectively to get yourself out of trouble, to put yourself into situations where you can apply your spirits and your items or to get yourself into a position where you can supernova effectively. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agree. So, yeah, everyone should absolutely be trying these heroes. I know they're getting picked left, right, and center. Um, so you guys should definitely get some games in. Maybe you'll get some in with me and BDLM, and we can uh, show you our Terror Blade and uh, uh, Phoenix skills. Terror Bad, I should say, because that's how I'm oh. going to play them if I play them. But, uh, no, it's nothing on the hero ones again. It's all me. But, uh, oh! I want, I want to get your opinion. Apparently, some people swear by Terror Blade getting Rod of Atos. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, God. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. I don't, see, here's the thing. Like you were saying earlier, I kind of get, I, like, you have the room to get an item that's not contributing to your damage because of metamorphosis but i feel like scotty is just the way to go there i mean obviously it's more expensive but i really think that you should probably not <laughs> the rod of whoa everyone here heard it here first in episode 76 bdlm said not to get a rod of atos on a hero it hurts my soul a bit but <laughs> i gotta stand by that one um I mean, I get it, right? But no, no I would not probably enough. not do that. Not enough. No. And, you know, it's... No. The slow from the <laughs> Orb of Venom, even if it's in your range form, is like all the slow outside of Reflection and Ioscotti that I think you should Yeah, as for. Tim can in our chat say, and surely his mana consumption isn't crazy enough to warrant it. I mean... You can get the health from pretty much any other item, so that part's not going to be a factor. And the slow you could also get from Scotty or even Sange if you want to go Sange and Yasha or something else. I mean, there's many ways to get slow. So I don't know why, but I read that some people just absolutely swear they get their Ravatos, one of their big items early. And, uh, you know? Well, I will also say that I read a guide that suggested getting Butterfly on phoenix because mm. he has decent attack damage and his strength gain gives him a relevant amount of damage throughout the game so you can't trust all the guides read that's the moral of the story uh not all are trustworthy <laughs> uh i think we can both agree to that so uh do you know what we can look forward to next week do we even have an agenda built up for that episode yet are we actually oh, going to finally discuss what we were going to discuss two weeks ago uh, we're going to talk about uh, techies that are going to come out by then. Ah, hopefully. Gosh, we can only pray. Yeah. Uh, no, stay tuned to the Facebook. Yeah. To the, the, yeah, the Facebook and the Twitter uh, for updates about what's coming up next. But, you know, for right now, I mean, we got all this fun stuff to deal with. We got the Terrorblade. We got the Phoenix. Go out there, play some games. Tell us what you guys think. 
We'd be happy to hear how your games are going. So until next time, go out there, play some Dota, watch some Dota, have fun. See you later.